Hey what's up guys it's your pal Zola here and today we are going to be having a look at the After Effects layout so before we go and get started on anything more complex I guess it's kind of important to know what we're looking at so today's lesson will largely be me pointing at stuff uh, both physically and literally on the screen and explaining what each panel does because just as in Photoshop, um, it's important to know how the program works. With it being a video program, it's slightly different to Photoshop, but there are also many similarities. So the biggest difference between Photoshop and um, After Effects is when you bring something into Photoshop, it's either a picture or you can bring in videos as well, right? But what happens is in Photoshop, when you bring something in, immediately it becomes a layer. And uh, that's because Photoshop only has two things to worry about, which, uh, you know, largely you're only ever going to use pictures. You can bring in, um, you know, uh, pieces of video as well. But largely, most of the time, 98% of the time, you're going to be using pictures. And so that's why Photoshop doesn't really need this panel here. But in After Effects, we kind of do. And this is the kind of, it's called a project panel. And this is where everything in your project resides. So to bring something into your project, you go to File, Import, and then File. And you can bring in anything here. I have some stock images that I have bought. So I'm just going to select one here of the Eiffel Tower. And now this item resides in my project panel. And um, I can just hit Control i again to import. And I can even import you know, like more than one at once. So I'm going to Shift click these, go to Import, and now we've got some more some more items so if we if we click on these we'll get a bit of information so th this is 6000 by 650 uh, pixels by 5000 it's at a aspect ratio of one which I'll explain another day and so you see and because of the after uh, the Photoshop document sizes I've shown you already you should be kind of familiar with these numbers and know that these are actually really high-res images which is because I bought them and they're stock and if I expand this panel here, you'll see at the moment I've only got the comments and the name. If I brought in a video, bit of video, so let's do that. Uh, I'm trying to think where I have a bit of video. I'll bring in one of the tour animations I did for the chain smoke. So let's just bring in this one. Okay. Uh, now with the video, we have a slightly so we have a different icon um, and. We have, if you look up here, we have slightly different information. So here we only have two things to worry about. We've got the um, aspect ratio and the pixel sizes and how many colors it has. Here with the uh, video, we have 1920 by 1080. So this is, again, the pixel size, so that's fine. But we also have how long the video is, which is here, 8 seconds and 8 frames. The speed at which the video will be played back, and more on that on another lesson. Uh, how many colors it's made up of and the codec it is encoded in and then last but not least this is the audio information that comes so this loop has audio as you can see by this little waveform and it has um, 48 32 bit stereo audio which is really high quality uh, so yeah so just just kind of important to uh, know and if that it's really important to organize your projects uh, like I said in Photoshop I can't stress this enough down here just like in Photoshop you can uh, create a new folder in Fo Photoshop they're called groups here they're called folders but they do exactly the same thing and I can call this maybe pictures and we can drop all our pictures into the pictures folder and then I can right click make a new one there call, call this video and it just allows you to keep your projects nicely organized um, this color tab I think by default is somewhere down here. One, the first trick I'm going to show you, and this is one of the main shortcuts, is if you press tilde above any window, it will maximize the window in your screen, and that's super important because sometimes, especially especially if you're working on a laptop or a small uh, a computer with a small screen, it's so important to be able to like maximize your windows, especially because you don't have a lot of room on the screen to pull these panels. So um, yeah, I'm working on a big ass screen. It's like 30 inch, um, but you know, it's it's useful to know the shortcut anyway to maximize the window, and then just press it again to come out. So uh, if you double click on a piece of footage, it will open here in the footage window. And at the moment, we're viewing this at 50% size. You can do fit up to 100% and this way you'll be able to see no matter how big this window is, your image will scale to the size of that which is kind of useful. 
so here we have like a temple. Uh, here we have uh, something that looks Greek. That one we've already seen. Here we have the Eiffel Tower, as we can see it's gone back to this, so it just goes to fit. And so on and so forth. So uh, this is the footage window. This is the render queue. Um, if any of these windows, by the way, are missing, just like in Photoshop, you can go to Window and uh, press the one you want. If it doesn't have a tick, it means it's not viewable right now. If it does have a tick, it means it's somewhere, might be hidden away somewhere or doing something. Um, not to worry about that. Uh, the composition window, we can't see anything yet. Um, ignore what I'm doing right now, but if we make a composition, now there is something in our composition window. And I'll explain all that kind of stuff later. Um, so this is down here is our timeline. And um, I can drop as many things on here as I want. I can even drop uh, multiple instances of the same image. And just like in Photoshop, the top layer is the one that will show up uh, first in the composition. So there we have it. So that's our video. And then below it, you have all the um, pictures which I just brought in. So very similar to Photoshop, which is again why I said if you've done the Photoshop course, a lot of this will make a lot more sense a lot quicker. So uh, down here is how you interpret footage. You don't really need to know about that just yet. Here's how you create a new composition, and we'll do that in another lesson. And then we have the bin icon in case you want to delete stuff. Uh, let's delete this composition, for example. Just drop it on the bin, hit OK. You can also just select something and hit delete, which is way easier. So uh, I very rarely, very rarely use that bin. So um, we've shown the composition window. So the composition window only has something when we have something on the timeline. Uh, down here we have the timeline, which again has loads of buttons. I'm not going to go into those today. I'm just giving you a quick overview. Um, let's go about how we customize the interface. So here we have effects, controls, and project. And as you can see here, they're sharing the same space on the screen when I click them. But uh, may, what if we want them to both be visible at the same time? Well, it's really easy. Anything that, um, all these are called tabs, right, in the um, layout. So we have the timeline tab, we have the um, layer tab here, the footage tab, the render queue, etc. To move, uh, to re reposition the layout, literally grab and move. And so you'll see here now we have lots of different options. If I drop it on the middle, um, it's going to make a new tab. If I drop it to the bottom, it's going to dock it to the bottom of this area that we have, which is what I'm going to do. If we drop it here, I'll make like a new window to the side, and here I'll make a new window to the left side. So let's just say we want to dock it at the bottom of project. So there we go. And so what we've done now is they're still sharing the same vertical space, but now, um, and as you can see, this is dynamic. If I drag it up, um, this is going to get, you know, less room and more room depending on if I pull it up and down and if I want to take it back um, only thing I have to do is highlight it till we get this little bar up here and you can drag these left and right and so like the whole of the layout is super customizable so if uh, for some reason I wanted to put the uh, <laughs> the timeline down here which would be incredibly idiotic uh, I could do that I can bring it back put it there which is where it was before um, if I, I actually usually keep like the footage window down here, like really small. So if I want to view something real quick, I can just like double click it and it'll open down here and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's that picture. Or if I want to watch a video, just double click the video and I can kind of like scrub through and see uh, what the video is doing. So that's kind of useful. Up here we have the panel, um, which has all your tools, a bit like again in Photoshop, the tools panel. And this again will change based on what you have selected as you can see here, as I select stuff, like things down here are changing. And uh, we'll get to all of that in another lesson. So I'm going to close that. So you can see we've kind of lost our footage panel here. So I'm going to pull it back up. Uh, down here we have, on the right, we have our effects and presets, which um, just are actually up here as well. So if you come down here, we have all the presets and effects. Uh, here we have brushes. I'm going to close brushes. I barely use them in Photoshop. Here we have the preview panel, and again, I'm just skimming over these because I will show you all these in another lesson individually. I'm just showing you that they're all here, and you know we can rearrange the layout however we want. If you've got the layout somewhere where you kind of like it, um, 
and you're like, you know what, I want to save this as a layout. You go up to here and there's these like three lines and you can either reset to saved layout, which if you've messed your layout and you've lost panels that you want to get back, you would do that, you would reset. Uh, you can save changes to this workspace. So if you've already named it, as you can see, I have JZ, JZ2, and then my tutorials one, which is the one where I've squ squashed everything onto one screen. But if I select um, JZ2 screen, which is usually what I use when I'm working, you'll see that layout has changed. And what now this is a composition, and off the screen, on the other screen, I have a big timeline. Uh, and I can come back to that layout by just clicking tutorials. It's a lot more intuitive than it used to be. Before, if you made a change, you used to have to overwrite. And uh, there's lots of like preset ones in here, which you can try. Uh, you can try the animation one. This will kind of like try and set you up to do animation. Uh, so maybe have a look with some of these and uh, maybe move some windows around for today and just get used to uh, importing footage into your project window. And um, as you can see, I've lost my effects. So I would just go here and um, so the effects are here somewhere. Uh, let's go back, effects and presets, there they are, they're here, and then uh, we've lost our effect control so we can bring those back, and again I can dock it here, if I want to dock it just to the right I can have a separate window, so um, yeah, just get used to uh, the layout and what the windows do for today, and um, try maybe rearranging the tabs into a way that you find uh, comfortable to deal with and import some footage and we will get on to the next stuff in the next lesson. Thanks for watching and I will see you on lesson two.